Hello and welcome to my morning note. Let's take another trip back to China today. Obviously, China's economic fortunes are critical to the rest of the world. They may well have helped to drive last week's very startling collapse in the price of gold. And if you look within China, it's very interesting to see how important the consumer has become. Within consumers, it's fascinating to see how important that great cohort of Chinese migrant workers have now become. Those are critical findings from some research that's been produced by China Confidential, the FT's China Research Service. With me now to discuss them is China Confidential's principal, James King. James, thanks for coming on the video once more. Let's start by taking a look uh, at the uh, underlying performance uh, of the Chinese stock exchange since the nadir back in 2008. The yellow and green lines there show you industrials and materials, the, the, the sectors that you might think would be the drivers, and they've barely done any better than uh, stricken sectors on the edge of the eurozone. Meanwhile, the really strong performance has become come from consumer sectors. What is driving this? That would surprise, I think, many people. I think uh, one of the aspects that's going on, as you alluded to in your introduction, is mm. this enormous groundswell of consumer spending at the grassroots level. Mm. Migrant workers, 220 million of them, more than the whole population of Brazil, and also rural residents as well. Um, but the migrant workers who, a decade ago, were regarded normally as kind of economically inert. Right. They didn't really have that much money. Um, they couldn't really uh, spend on a discretionary basis. Um, this has now completely changed. Uh, it's changed even from five years ago. And what we have now is a very strong, potent consumer cohort among these uh, 220 million migrant workers. Now, let's take a look at some charts to put this into context. First of all, according to this, <laughs> Chinese migrant workers actually spend more, or the consumers spend more on consumption than the whole of Turkey or Indonesia, and compare, you know, are not necessarily so much smaller than the whole of India in terms of consumption. That's right. The survey that we did, which covered 1,500 migrant workers across the whole country, mm. uh, showed that the total spending by migrant workers in 2012 was 4.2 trillion renminbi, right. which equates to 680 billion US dollars. So as you can see, uh, it's a very major um, uh, consumer cohort. The other aspect of migrant right. worker spending, which is important, is that their salaries are growing strongly year after year. And the reason for that is structural. There is a labor shortage, right. a blue collar labor shortage in China now, which tends to propel migrant worker salaries up uh, strongly year after year. And in 2012, we found that the increase in their salary was 13%, stronger than, 13. 13, stronger than virtually any other urban cohort. Um, that well, and stronger than many other countries, which explains why China is steadily losing some of that great competitiveness it's had. That's now it. let's take a look. You've also looked at this by, by generation. Uh, and it's obvious that uh, those in, born in the 1990s, still barely into their 20s, uh, have a much stronger pro uh, propensity to actually spend their income than, than those older born in the 1970s and the 1980s. Take us through these numbers and uh, what, yes. why, what, why this is. It's a very interesting uh, finding. Um, I think a lot of it is psychological and social. Uh, mm. the, the people who, the, 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 the children who were born in the 1990s were born at a time of relative plenty in China. Mm. So they grew up uh, in a much more consumerized world than um, pe children who were born in the 1970s right. when money was very short and Mao was really still in power and Chairman Mao was still in right. power. There really wasn't much consumer uh, life going on at all. The last time I was in the relatively wealthy parts of Beijing and Shanghai, all the brands you could see were Western. Are they actually still going to want Western brands or are Chinese it's, people going to produce their own brands? It's interesting. Um, migrant mm. worker taste is different from the higher echelons of the consumer right. um, um, cohorts in China. Uh, luxury spenders in China will generally go for the foreign brands. Migrant workers tend to go much more for domestic Chinese brands. But there are differences. For instance, sportswear, it's mostly companies like Anta and Li Ning, Chinese companies. But in terms of fast food, the two leading brands for migrant workers are uh, KFC and McDonald's. Maybe that's not such a surprise. On average, I would say 60 to 70 percent of the brand preferences of migrant workers are for domestic brands, and the remainder is for the foreign brands. Okay, thank you very much. I think that's fascinating. It shows 
first of all, that there are reasons to worry about the overall competitiveness of China, but secondly, that there appears to be a huge opportunity for anybody who can spot the winners in appealing to this huge new cohort of Chinese consumers.